What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys a quick unboxing, size comparisons and impressions for the OnePlus 3. Now you guys know last year with my OnePlus 2 review, I had a few complaints about the phone as many reviewers did. I was actually thinking about not picking up this phone, uh, but there seems to be a lot of hype around it, not actually built by OnePlus this time which is one of the things that I like. There's no invite system. OnePlus hasn't really claimed this to be a flagship killer. They just put the phone out there. You can buy the phone. They're gonna let people decide on their own. And I actually think it looks pretty good. And for those reasons, the fact that OnePlus has settled down uh, and they've sort of given us a chance to buy the phone right away, I decided to pick it up and take a look. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the quick unboxing. We'll go ahead and get into it. You guys can see the big three there on the box, the OnePlus logo. Really nothing too other interesting. You got some OnePlus 3 branding on the side. And then on the back, you just got the model number there, which is the A3000. This is the graphite color, 64 gigabytes. Uh, it does come available in gold as well. But Carl Pai, uh, the CEO of OnePlus, has said that the gold variant will not be available until later in July. So if you're hoping to get the gold variant, you'll have to wait a little bit. Uh, I actually did want the gold. I ordered this within the uh, Loop VR. Uh, store which was right after the announcement the other day um, and I couldn't find the gold so I just went ahead and got the graphite let's go ahead and lift the box you can see right there you've got the one plus three go ahead and take that out we'll just have a quick look at what else is inside the box before we get into looking at the phone nice presentation as usual from one plus this is a very sturdy sort of piece of plastic inside of that as well I believe you've got some documentation here folds right out we can slide this out and you've got your quick start guide, SIM tool as usual, which I have a ton of, so I don't really need it. User guide, so I might take a look at that, but probably not. Let's go ahead and slide that back in. Uh, and I think you also get, uh, maybe not. I thought there was a OnePlus sticker in here. There might be one, might be on the bottom here, actually. Let's look. Yeah, there it is. You get a never settle OnePlus sticker as well. So I saw that in uh, my friend Danny Wing at his unboxing. You guys probably check that out on his channel. It's cool, pretty nice little swag there. Uh, and then here at the bottom, of course, we've got a OnePlus 3 branding and then some other just standard stuff. You do have USB Type-C on here, a pretty nice looking cable, which we've come to expect. You've also got these little clips here, which let you keep your cable nicely arranged. That's definitely a nice thing because you guys know I sell a lot of phones after I review them. If I get tired of them, I also keep a lot of phones. Uh, but when you sell it, put it back in the box, those clips are going to let you fit the charging cable back in there very nicely. Now the OnePlus 3 does have this new, uh, it's also got a cover right there on your USB-C cable. That's also a nice look. So OnePlus giving you some nice sort of extras included in the box. This does have uh, the built-in new dash charge technology from OnePlus and also USB Type-C, which is nice to see. It's really becoming a standard. And then of course the other thing that is in the box is the aforementioned dash charge power brick right here you can see right there it says dash on it so basically this power brick is a little bit larger than standard because it does some heat dissipation some other interesting things so you really want to use the included dash charge power brick along with the usb type c cable that came with the phone to get those benefits of course you could use another usb type c cable but there's been a lot of issues with people using third-party cables and you won't get the built-in technology that's baked in here all right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, actually, I just noticed on the back here of the little insert there, you've got a nice little message from the founder, Carl Pye, which uh, sort of talks about uh, they appreciate you buying the phone and the ideals that OnePlus was founded on. I definitely appreciate the fact uh, that this year they changed a lot of their marketing strategies that I've sort of complained about in the past. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual phone itself. Then I'll boot it up and uh, we'll take a quick look at the software. Actually, let me boot that up as soon as I get these stickers off of here. And then we'll take a quick look at the software. Just look around the hardware while it's booting up, though. Uh, you can see the graphite color looks pretty nice, to be honest with you. It does remind me a lot of the space gray colorway on the iPhone. So if you have an iPhone and you've used the space gray color variant before, you probably sort of find that a bit familiar there on the back. Also, if you look at the very back of the phone, it does very greatly resemble the Huawei Mate S. Uh, which Danny Wingett also pointed out, so giving him credit where it's due. Uh, the phone does have an all-metal design, so all-metal unibody, which I really like. Now, the camera does protrude quite a bit from the back of the phone right there, uh, so, you know, that's concerning. We'll see how bad, uh, whether or not that camera glass scratches. 
One thing people really loved last year was the notification slider right here, the alert slider, which will let you change that from priority uh, to silent, as well as keeping your notifications on. You've got the volume rocker right there as well. And then if we go along the bottom here, you'll see the speaker along with the headphone jack, as well as the uh, USB type C charging port. You can see the phone's already booted up there. So we'll have a look in a second. On this side, you can see you have the power button along with your SIM tray. There is no micro SD support on this phone, so you will not find a micro SD slot here. Around front, of course, you'll find your home button slash fingerprint scanner as well. The phone does feel really nice in the hand. I definitely can't argue with that. It's very, very nice to hold. It's got a pretty thin overall profile to it as well. You can see that here on the back again, that camera bump is the only main complaint that I have. But I definitely like the way the phone looks. It's a little boring, but um, it definitely doesn't feel bad in the hand. It's got a nice feel to the build quality overall. So I definitely don't have any big complaints. I definitely glad they got rid of the sandstone back. I was not a huge fan of that. I like the all metal design. Uh, there's nothing particularly special about it, but overall a good job by OnePlus on that front. Let's go ahead and get started and uh, just take a quick look. I'm going to run through this. We'll get to the software and just have a quick look at that. They do let you choose your keyboard, which is pretty cool. You can choose between Google Keyboard and the Swift Key keyboard from the Emoji. I'll go ahead and skip Wi-Fi for now, uh, and that way we can just take a quick look. Um, let's actually set up the fingerprint. Might as well see how quick the setup is. I'm going to change the angle a little bit with my thumb. So, of course, the setup is always dependent on how well you actually change the angle so that it can capture your full print. Uh, it's definitely a little bit one of the longer setups I've seen recently. The setup on the G5, the Huawei P9, and also the S7 Edge, I believe, is a little bit faster. Nothing too big uh, to complain about there. Um, I don't like software buttons. I've been using the S7 Edge. I do want to double tap to wake, uh, O to open the camera, and V to toggle the flashlight. You got some nice little gestures there in Oxygen OS which I did love Oxygen OS last year, if you guys remember. And Oxygen OS is back. You see it's very stock. You got no bloatware in there out of the box, which I think is one of the best things about this phone. Just got your stock Google Apps right there. Uh, if you pull down here, you can go and see the phone is running in About Phone, Android 6.0.1 right there. Overall, the software on this phone is one of the main things that appeals to me. It's so close to stock. You can see the settings very, very close to stock, but they add a lot of really cool custom customizations in here. You've got LED notifications. You can customize those colors. You can turn on dark mode, which is one thing that I really like. Dark mode is pretty awesome. You can also change your accent color, which I think is a nice little feature that helps you personalize the phone. I personally think the black with the purple looks amazing. So there's some really great things back about the software. I think Oxygen OS has been one of the strong suits. Of course, OnePlus was a little slow with Android updates in the past, so that's one sort of knock against this, one reason you might not consider this phone over similarly priced options. But I definitely think the software is going to be fun to play with. Uh, and then, of course, I'm going to get into the camera in some future videos. Um, but the camera is supposed to be pretty solid this year. You've got some pretty basic options there. See photo, video, manual, panorama. So we do have a nice manual mode in tow, just like on a lot of other flagship phones. Uh, it doesn't quite have the wide open uh, aperture that you have from the S7 Edge or the LG G5. You got f2.0 on here. That doesn't necessarily mean the pictures are going to be way worse. Of course, we'll have to take a look at that when we do sort of a head-to-head -head comparison. Overall, just at first glance, the software looks nice and snappy. There have been a lot of people who've done a couple of RAM management videos on this, so I'm going to delve into that myself also and do some comparisons, and we'll see what's up on that. All right, so that's a quick look at the software, a quick look at the body of the phone. I like the feel of it. I feel like it's not really a spectacular design, uh, some elements that are borrowed from other phones. I'm glad to see this notification slider back over here. That was one of my favorite features. I think a lot of people really liked that feature last year. Uh, and then, of course, the software also looks pretty impressive. So just quickly, some size comparisons, as you guys know I like to do. Here is your Galaxy Note 5. This is, of course, the OnePlus uh, 3 is a 5.5-inch screen. 1080p, so that's another thing to keep in mind. You're not getting a 2K screen here. So the Note 5, of course, at 5.7 inches should be bigger, but you can see it's not really that much bigger. So in terms of height, the Note 5 is just a little bit taller. Uh, in terms of width, I guess they're pretty similar. Maybe the OnePlus 3 is a little bit uh, thinner in terms of the overall 
footprint. And then you can see here, if we put the Note 5 on top, there's really not too much of a difference that way either. So the phones are very similar, even though you get a bigger screen on the Note 5, that might be something that uh, appeals to you. So next, let's take a look at the HTC 10 here. This is, of course, a smaller phone, so we expect the OnePlus 3 to be quite a bit bigger, and indeed it is. So if you stack those two up, you can see the OnePlus 3 is quite a bit taller. Um, the HTC 10 is a pretty thick phone because it's got that curve to the back. You can see that protruding camera, though, from the OnePlus 3. I don't know how much I like that. Uh, but the, one, the HTC 10 is quite a bit thicker, and of course the OnePlus 3 is quite a bit wider because it's got the bigger screen. You've got the big comparison that a lot of people have been doing, your Galaxy S7 Edge, which has the same size screen, 5.5 inches. Uh, you can see here if we stack them up, the OnePlus 3 is a bit taller. It's also a bit wider by a, a tiny little margin. Uh, in terms of the thinness, the S7 Edge, because of its curved edge, is also a little bit thinner. So if you want the smaller footprint, you could go with that. And then the last comparison, which everybody likes to see, even though this is an Android phone, this is the iPhone 6S Plus, also a 5.5 inch screen. The iPhone 6S Plus is one of the biggest 5.5 inch phones you can buy. You can see how tall it is because of those chunky bezels at the top. The OnePlus 3 is a little bit skinnier if it wasn't for that camera bump, but the camera bump uh, probably gives the close to a tie between the iPhone. Uh, and then the OnePlus 3 is not quite as wide as the iPhone 6S Plus. So the iPhone 6S Plus is still one of the widest, tallest 5.5 inch screens you can get. So if you want the smallest footprint, this is definitely not the phone to go with. All right, guys, so I'll have some follow up videos, of course, with uh, impressions on the RAM management fingerprint scanner and I'll be back with a full review. Let me know what else you guys wanna see in the comments below. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Really appreciate it, helps out the channel. Follow me on Google+, Twitter, and Instagram with the links in the description. Also over on dopetechdaily.com. I appreciate you guys checking out this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.